Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another episode. Um, I say that every time. I think I'm going to do the, um, hey there, you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> or maybe, hey there, you dogs and puppies. I don't know. I'm going to stick with, I'm just going to stick with, I'm going to stick with, hey there. Uh, welcome to another episode. This is going to be an extensive one. This actually episode came from the comment section. Uh, somebody wanted to know what was it like living with different sighthounds as compared to boar's eyes. And this is to help people who are making decision maybe what sighthound they want to get if they're exploring. Boar's eyes is a breed to have um, or other ones as well. I grew up with whippets, greyhounds, Scottish deerhounds, and boar's eyes. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences between those as compared to borzois. All of my other videos, if you're watching this for the first time, are about borzois, so you can get a sense of them. But these are going to be the comparisons of whippets, greyhounds, and Scottish deerhounds to borzois. We're going to go small to large. So let's start with whippets. Definitely a smaller dog, so it's something you're looking for for compactness. You're going to get that in the whippet. Um, you also have that short hair uh, coat, so a lot less shedding, uh, which is great. What you are going to get is more energy. There's a lot, I almost feel like as you take sight hounds and you shrink them down to greyhounds and Italian greyhounds, you get, um, you get an accentuated amount of energy and whippets need a lot of exercise. They love to zoom. They are, they are running and crazy. I know they talk all the time about greyhounds and their top speed, which is the highest, but the agility of a whippet is just incredible. And if you ever see them running flat out, they can turn on a dime. And the dog that I grew up with, his name was Buster. He was that to the max. He lived to be 17 years old. This dog was the fastest dog on the planet and he knew it. So he would go after, we lived in the middle of nowhere in Arizona. He would go after coyotes. He'd bite them and run away, knowing perfectly well that, that, that coyote would never get anywhere near him. He would go up to Havelina, which are these large like wild boars or peckerins, I guess. Yes, that's right. Um, and he would go up and bite those and run away. This dog was absolutely fearless. I don't know if that's typical for all whippets, but Buster was just an absolute crazy dog, and I loved him dearly. So very independent, more energy. They're going to need more exercise. They're going to have more zoomies. You're going to have a little extra on that that kind of sighthound thing. Kind of the beauty of Borzois and some of the larger breeds is that they sleep all day, uh, after they get their exercise out. As you can see, Esper's a little tired. We just got back from a nice uh, dog park and a run. So, yeah, she's going to sleep the rest of the day. It's great. They're like furniture. So, also... <laughs> oh, man. So, also, Whippets, not the cuddliest of dogs. They they do like warmth. They'll take a lot of sun baths. They'll get underneath your covers, at least my dog did. And... Um, they can tend, you gotta socialize them. They can depend, be a little nippy with their personal space, a little kind of standoffish. Again, this is gonna be dog to dog basis, but I do found them to be that aloofness of a sight hound to the absolute max. I mean, they get, they get very, very, very independent. Like if they don't wanna do something, they're not gonna do it. My dog Buster, man, he knew his name. Very intelligent dog, but he didn't wanna do something, he was never gonna do it. Okay, so next is the greyhounds. I actually had three greyhounds growing up. There was Mocha, Jasper and Mule. And these dogs were very, very different per, per three. And we're kind of going to go through all three pretty quickly. And I'll just talk about kind of what their differences or how they might have typified the breed. Um, so these were all rescue greyhounds and they came from the dog track. And what I noticed from the rescue greyhounds is they absolutely bond with you stronger than you could possibly imagine. I think part of it, you know, you're taking this dog from this terrible situation when they are just rigorously trained for a couple of years and then essentially just let go. They have bad teeth. There's a lot of things you gotta deal with if you rescue a greyhound. That's a whole nother separate, separate set of videos, but incredible dogs, incredibly loyal and friendly. So again, we can already see compared to the whippets, uh, they're gonna be a little bit more bonded to you as a person. They're a little, a little bit more in tune with you and they're gonna listen a little bit more. You're still gonna get your sight hound stuff where they are extremely independent. You can't be off leashes. And I've also found that as rescue greyhounds, you're gonna get one of two types. They're gonna be the one type of dog that is a race dog that wants to race for the rest of its life and it's gonna have the zoomies like crazy. Or the other side of it is the dog that got enough racing when it was in the track that it never wants to run again. 
and you'll find, and we had all three of these. So Mocha was the first one. She absolutely every day would go out on the lawn and run figure eights. That's like their practice track. So she would just run figure eights for like 35 minutes just to burn herself out. She was a muscle machine. She looked like a failed steroid experiment. She was incredible. Very loyal. Didn't really didn't really know how to integrate to families early on. It took a while for him to her, sorry, for her to warm up. Um, but a very friendly dog, very amazing dog. So the next one was Jasper. Jasper's kind of middle of the round. Run a little bit, you know, come back and sleep. Again, compared to the Borzoi, probably about the same amount of exercise needed. Again, a little bit more compact. Then we had Mule. That was the dog who literally, I don't think I ever saw him run. I think he associated the track with such negativity that he just never wanted to run again. It was really kind of depressing. So uh, I think that's the, the gamut of greyhounds. <laughs> Look at Esther in the bush back there. Come here, Esper, come here. Good girl. I got my, I got my co-anchor back. Recall is really important with greyhounds, especially if you're getting from the track. They're two, three years old. They probably had a really terrible name or a number for a many of years. So you got to be careful if you're training a rescue greyhound. This is probably not relevant to this video. That you really need to, you really need to work on, um, on a lot of stuff, a lot of socialization, especially right when you get them. So the next one is Scottish Deerhounds. Scottish Deerhounds are a little different. They look a little different. They look a little bit like gigantic gray terriers. Uh, and one thing I will say going back through, Whippets, Greyhounds, Borzois are not guard dogs. They are not guard dogs. Whippets might bark a little bit more than the rest of them. Greyhounds couldn't care less. Borzois will probably let burglars into your house. Um, they are not guard dogs. They're not great protection dogs. They, they might be alert dogs at the most. Scottish Deerhounds though, you start to get you start to get a little bit of a different attitude. We had four Scottish Deerhounds. We had Ruggles, Tessa, Malcolm, and Argus. And the first dog Tessa was an absolute queen. She was a complete dog. You know, sometimes you just meet just absolutely special dogs like Esper um, that just that just get it. They get their humans. They're extremely smart. Their their exercise level less than the Borzoi. They are lumps to say that. They will run for 10 minutes and then that's the end of it. Big powerful animals, big powerful animals don't necessarily use it as much as the, the Borzois do. Different coat, kind of a waxy, wiry fur, don't shed as much as the Borzoi. Uh, more people oriented, less independent. They love, they're not people pleasers, but they want to know that you're there they want to be in your space. They kind of want to watch over. They have this protection attitude. Tessa and Ruggles were extremely protective. We never thought if somebody were to break in the house, you'd have a 200 pound Scottish Deerhound just tearing you apart. So a little bit different, obviously, than the Borzoi uh, in that regard. Energy level a little less. I would say comparatively, a Scottish Deerhound might be even a better like apartment dog than even the Borzois can be because of their 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 temperament. You're still gonna have to exercise them. You're still gonna have to have them on a leash. They have a little bit of that sight hound thing. They are a little bit more independent, but they are a little bit more people oriented and a little bit more. Uh, they just want to be around you more. That's the only way I can put it. They're very very interesting dogs, and they look like they need a little Scottish hat, and they want they should live in a lighthouse. So, um, very cool. The other two. Scottish Deerhounds we had, uh, Argus and Malcolm, they were father and son. They were a little weird. I think that with any breed, you can get a quirky dog. They were kind of just like these goofball, like absolute utter goofballs to the point where you don't know if that's that's a nervous tick or if he's doing that on purpose. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't. Is this video gonna help anybody? I have no idea. I'm just gonna ramble through it. It's kind of what I do on my channel, I guess. Keep the suggestions coming. Obviously, this is great. Any specific questions, stuff that I didn't cover because I just kind of rambled uh, about these specific breeds, just, just throw in the comments and I'll answer it as best I can. Again, this is just my anecdotal experience having been raised with all of these types of beasts. So for now, this is Esper and I saying goodbye and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.